my name is Caitlin Bailey and I am a wildlife filmmaker and photographer based out of, based out of Texas. I have a, a Bachelor of Science in Animal Biology and a Master of Fine Arts in Science and, in science and Natural History of Filmmaking. Even though I was born and raised in Texas, I've always had a fascination and, and a love for the polar regions. In fact, three months after I graduated with my master's, I got hired on as a filmmaker and photographer uh, for a six-week NOAA expedition to the Arctic aboard the U.S. Coast Guard cutter Healy. And this past February, I, I became a bipolar explorer when I went to Antarctica to film and photograph leopard seals and penguins, both underwater and on land. I learned a lot during both, both of my polar trips, and I want to, to, to share s some things that, that I learned that might help you in the future. Let's start off with gear. Always bring a tripod. This is especially important if you want to photograph the auroras or filming wildlife with a telephoto lens. When I was in the Arctic, I took a tripod with me, but it was so big and so bulky that it was actually really difficult to haul it around like the like, ship and stuff. So I didn't like really like use it that much. So now I actually have a travel tripod and this little guy, can you know get smaller and it's really flexible and it's super light so i don't mind hauling this out onto the ice or like on a hike and stuff um it, it also like packs down like very very small and stuff so it's important to have gear that you actually want to use and it's not too heavy to haul around next you will definitely want a polarizing filter. Um, there's a lot of glare and like reflections from snow and ice. It's important to practice with these filters though before taking it out into the field. And that goes with any gear like that you have. And speaking of gear like in like in general, um, always make sure you have the the right gear and make sure that you have backups especially with clothing or camera accessories that, that you may need. So when I was in Antarctica, I took two sets of diving gloves with me, but one of my sets tore about halfway through. And so I had to use my, like my, like my like backup pair. It turns out that the backup that I had was not as good as my, my late main set. And I was in the water with a leopard seal for about an hour and a half. And I lost feeling in these two fingers right here for about uh, like over a month for like six weeks and stuff. And they were super, super painful. Um, so, so yeah, like cold, cold, cold weather is very harsh on like your body. Um, it's also harsh on on like camera gear, um, especially batteries. So it's important to protect everything from the cold. With things like batteries, um, the cold actually zaps them pretty quickly, even if they're not inside of your camera. So like what like what like you should do is um, uh, keep keep those batteries like in like an inside pocket close to 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 your to your body heat. I actually have four batteries for for my for my Nikon, like which is my like main like camera, um, so that I, I can like rotate them. So now that we've talked about gear, let's like move on to the the like important stuff. Always know your limitations. Do not do something you are uncomfortable with, or that is beyond your skill set. Do not endanger yourself, your peers, or wildlife. When I was going to Antarctica, um, I was actually going as a scuba diver. However, 
in Texas, um, in case like y'all like, didn't know, there's not a lot of polar water here. There's not a lot of cold water to, you know, practice cold water diving in. And so I felt like I didn't have enough cold water diving experience to take with me to Antarctica. Um, so I actually decided about two months before my trip that I was not going to dive. Um, instead, I snorkeled. And you know what? It turned out to be the best, de best decision that I made for that trip. I could focus on my camera and plus I had wanted to film leopard seals and most of them stay close to the surface. Which leads me to my next point, which is know your wildlife and know the ice. Research any animals that you may encounter and what their typical behavior looks like. This could save your life. Now, with like with like leopard seals, um, I've been slightly obsessed and like researching them and reading stories about them for over ten years. So I knew that uh, they are very curious animals and will mouth at a camera housing. So I was ready like for that behavior and I knew like what to expect. Oh, and a side note, if you're going to be photographing or filming underwater, watch out for bubbles. I did not see, see these at all in my viewfinder and now I know that I need to run my hand over the dome every now and then to you know like get rid of them and stuff. But lastly, I think that my final piece of advice is very important. Put the camera down and just look around. There are some things a camera just can't capture. When I was in the Arctic, I was one of the few lucky ones who had the opportunity to stand on an ice floe and take images of the ship. I was so excited and started taking as many photos and like videos as I could. I finally stopped and took a breather and, you know, just to like really appreciate where I was. The only thing between me and thousands of meters of ocean water and the sea floor was a piece of floating ice that I was standing on. I took time to touch the ice with my hands and let my you know, emotions just catch up. It was one of the most powerful and inspirational moments of my life. Embracing what you feel in a moment will make you a better photographer and storyteller. People want that connection to a time and place. So put your heart into it and let your images speak. I hope that this was really helpful for you and, and maybe I'll see you out there on the ice someday. Good luck in your class. Bye.